in your life. Hi everybody, how you doing? Happy, happy Monday! So how did you, how was, oh, oh, see I can't even get my words out today, it's Monday morning, oh, trying to pretend like it's a happy, happy Monday, but I'm a bit knackered to be honest, bloody knackered, <laughs> never mind. Um, how was your Sundays? How were you all? Everybody okay? Fab. I hope you all had a lovely, lovely day. Um, I got some masks done, we did. A, we had a Modern Quilt Guild Zoom meeting which was lovely to see people and then did loads of masks and a load of prepping ready for this week as well so uh, hopefully I'm a little bit ahead of myself. <laughs> um, we got some really nice bits to start with, um, thank you for all your applique pictures, that was fab, I loved seeing all those. You got, you got some very very talented people out there. Some really wonderful stuff. I was like, oh, I like that one, I like that one, I like that. Just beautiful, really, really beautiful. And well done to those people as well who'd not had a go at Plinko before, but but went for it. That was fabulous. So, got a little free price draw as I promised. It was a challenge post, so we've I've got one of these amazing um, magnetic pin caddies. So it's on like a snap band, so it sits on your wrist, and this is magnetic, so you can drop your pins in, and a little mini charm pack as well which you could use to do the reverse applique, you know, like the pie, the pie crust cushion that we showed you. You could like sew all these together and um, put that in your reverse applique. So all of your names have gone in a hat. I think there was four, ooh, I'll pop that one back in, it fell out. Um, I think it was 49 comments, but um, I didn't, like we said, we only did, If you even if you posted two or three times, I only put you in once, okay, just to make it fair. So make some noise, shake everybody up. And Drew's going to pop his hand in, have a good rummage. Got one this go. time. There. there we go. So, Kath Lum. Catherine Lum, this is all yours, my darling. We'll get this over to you, okay? Fabulous. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining in, guys. Oh, don't put that back in there because I'll forget who it was. <laughs> slide that under there. There we go. So, well done. And thank you again for sharing all your... Oh, I just managed to get stuff in my tea. Oh... A little bit little bits of paper floating in it now we just made it as well <laughs> so congratulations Kath and thank you so much everybody for for joining in we will do more of those as, as time goes on because it's just it's it's really lovely seeing everybody's stuff I, I really enjoy it I really enjoy it and then the second nice thing is the raffles all filled up the food one so the last one we sold I think Saturday so I'm gonna slip my my fabric tea now um, so I'm going to go through, just before we pull it, what we've got there. So I'm just going to get it all out. Drew, anybody there? Anybody saying hello yes, or anything? Uh, we've got uh, Catherine, we've got Tina, we've got Wendy, Suzanne, Kate, yes, Marilyn, Anne, Wendy, those are people. Fabulous. Sean as well. Hi, everybody. Right, so raffle prize. Let's get it all out and we'll go through it and then we'll scratch away the winner. So I'm going to, as I show it you, I'm going to drop it back into the bag. So it might be a bit noisy. Okay. Rotary blade. Schmetz needles. The quilting needles. Uh, some flower head pins. I feel like the generation game, it should be on a conveyor belt, shouldn't it? <laughs> Drew's too young to know what that is. I know what it is. You know what the generation yeah. game is? Oh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, one of our notebooks. Um, a set of the moon threads. So you've got 20 moon threads in there. Um, a Moda charm pack and I've got a Moda layer cake Ma uh, McKinnock Island one which is just yummy 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 really pretty really pretty fabrics in that one like that a lot so a whole layer cake in there as well we've got a pattern one of our patterns we've got June Taylor pillow pack we've got one of the gradients panels we've got a bright pink kaleidoscope one this time um, we've got a Liberty bundle, which is all these are the brand new Liberties, these are the grey and pink ones which are Winterborn, brand new Liberty bundle, and one of our white gecko two and a half inch rulers. So that's everything. Oh, plus obviously you get a metre of wadding and um why are you all skew with today, love? I don't know. I'm gonna move it round a bit. Cool, there we go. Um so you get a metre of wadding and you get five meters of fabric of your choice from the shop not not including liberty okay so like we've done with other people whoever wins will contact you and we can sort that out okay right ready drum roll all filled up 
need my little drum roll up and here we go so let's try this in this corner here and let's see Ooh, this one's coming up a bit easier than normal who the winner is okay it is sausage and mash sausage and mash is Sonia Condon well done congratulations uh, I will give you a call soon um, as soon as we're done here I'll give you a call lovely Bab. Uh, and we'll get all that out to you well done congratulations sausage and mash goes to Sonia um, thank you everybody who entered uh, we will do another one again as as we you know number six I think this was number five so um, we'll do number six then probably starting at the weekend okay um, but congratulations thank you ever, ever so much for everybody who entered as per usual but I'll pop that in the bag congratulations Charlotte Sonia with sausage and mash I love sausage and mash Drew made sausage and mash a couple of weeks ago and uh, with the best onion gravy I've ever had it was lush so it's really good so um, right, what we did here we're doing fruity pincushions we're doing fruity fruity pincushions so um, this is not my pattern this is from it's a little project you know those part works that you used to be able to get and you and you'd have them come every month and they'd be or every week and they'd be in a in a folder you end up in a folder i had one years and years ago called um stitch sew and stitch or stitch and sew something like that um and i was flicking through it the other day just looking for some little ideas for this and these little um pin cushions are on there and i just thought they were really cute and there's, there's something you can hand sew as well as machine sew so i thought you know it's quite nice it's a nice little thing so you can make like a little apple or and i haven't finished this one so i can show you you can make a pear shape okay um we will put the template um it's not my template okay but i will scan it and i'll pop it on the website you'll be able to download that one if you want to for i'll do it for free because it's not my template okay um so um there isn't a written pattern as such because again it's it's not mine um it's somebody else's but i will i will pop the template on for you okay it, they're really easy to do i just follow the video back if you get stuck okay so thought we'd have a little go at this these i just thought they were really cute they'd also make um quite nice they'd make wrist ones you could put elastic on them that one might be it might be a bit big but i did think it would be really nice so you know i've seen them on a lot of people have them but they have a pin cushion like on the front of their you know imagine this was the front like here on their machines so if you put some elastic around it and actually popped it on the front of the machine it'd be really handy for that because they lie quite flat okay so you could uh could have it round but obviously this bit here you could have it round your machine as well so am i moving too fast for you today groups no sorry i felt like i was woo, then <laughs> So just before we get started, who's there? Anybody commenting? Anybody saying hello? Uh, we've got Lisa Fowler. We've also got Sarah who's joined us. Hi, lovely. We've got Tina as well. Fab. Um, Emma Reeson as well. Emma Reeson. Fab. Lovely. Fabulous. Thanks. Thank you all for everyone joining us. Okay, so we're going to have a little go at the apple. Okay, this little apple one here. Um, you want some medium weight or firm weight. I did that one in the firm weight and it just it went a little bit square so I think I'd stick with like a medium weight but if you've only got firm weight that will work okay but you want some iron on interfacing and we're going to draw out this is the apple one we're going to draw that out and you want six pieces drawn out I've gone ahead and already done the the one lot and then we're going to do the other three so you're going to have three in one color three in another but there's nothing stopping you having them all in different colours if you wanted to. If you're using up real, you know, little bits of scrap and stuff, you could absolutely do them all different colours. Um, I was thinking, actually, going off on a mini tangent, just picking that up then. If you filled them with, like, a sandbag, they'd be brilliant for pattern weights as well, if you're a dressmaker, for pattern weights. Um, yeah, or you could, I suppose, if, if you didn't put these bits on them and just kept them as, as that, They'd be quite nice for babies as well for, you know, don't don't put these bits on because they come off. But if you just popped a little piece of felt either side like we're going to do here, they'd be quite nice soft like bowling balls and playing balls for, for little ones as well. OK, so put this over. I'm going to draw this out three times. And while I'm drawing this, so I've got the, the bobbly side, which is the glue side, face down. And I'm going to draw onto the smoother side. 
don't use a Frixon because they're going to iron it onto the fabric in a minute. So don't use a Frixon. Just use you know, either a pencil. I've, I've picked up a coloured marker just so that you guys can see it easier. But a pencil will be absolutely fine for this. OK. And I'm cutting around. I'm drawing around the outside line, which is your cutting line and the dotty line inside, which will be my stitch line. So. Uh, while I'm doing this, any anybody there? Anybody got any questions, comments? What are we What are we up to? Sammy said, "You mean a rainbow?" Question mark. You could do a rainbow if you wanted to, Mrs. There's only six, so you'd have to just go purple instead of indigo and violet. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So I'm gonna go down like that around that one. Anything else? Anyone else there today? What were you all, What you all been up to? did you get up to this weekend obviously you know dancing and drinking and going out partying is out of the question so what happened what we what sewing did you do did you watch anything interesting on tv it was a bit rubbish the weather wasn't it so it wasn't like you could really get out into the garden too much either so, do have a chat ladies I'm busy in the shop today you uh, you all did a little bit of spending at the weekend so uh, we had lots of uh, web orders to sort this morning, which was lovely. And uh, sort out some of the new stuff that came in as well, ready for the Hachanda show coming up in a couple of weeks. So we had some stock coming for that. There we go. Any comments there, Graves? Anybody uh, having a chat? Lisa says sewing Dresden plates. Dresden plate. Ah, nice, lovely. Yeah, we've had a request for that actually. It's a, to do with the block of the week so i will do a dressed and plate later on uh, can i get this Ooh, i might just get those three onto there actually if i trim this down so i'm just trying to use up all my scraps and things at the moment and uh because i've got boxes and boxes of little pieces like this you know so it's like right what can i what can i do with that <laughs> so here we go let's go down that one just get rid of that excess and i can get it onto this this single piece then so wrong sides together so wrong side of fabric with the the glue of the fabric like that i can just get those in which is good so another little bit of scrap out of the way and interfacing is a is a press and hold okay like that to melt the glue and melt it onto the back of the fabric there we go there we go and this is why you didn't use a Frixon, because you'd do this and then your Frixon pen lines would would vanish. <laughs> Nikki says she was clearing out my sewing room to make room for my new machine that Ooh, arrives later this week. Nice. Did you go with that Janome that you were trying out? Is that the one you went for? There we go. Okay, so I've ironed that onto the back of that fabric and now I want to cut them out. Okay, and you're going to obviously cut them out on the outside line. So I'm going to cut these three out for you. There we go. So around like that. And you know, you really could, as long as you've got that much fabric, you could use all your tiny little scraps up with these. You know, um, like if you're making pattern weights and things, you could, you know, it doesn't have to be, I mean, not that that's a realistic apple colour, not in any way, shape or form. But, you know, it doesn't have to be a uniform thing. You know, it could be like Sarah saying, each one, a rainbow, each one's a different colour. <laughs> Just going to cut these ones out like this and then we can start sewing them up and they come together really quickly these ones really quickly helen said she did a foundation foundation piece paper piece in flamingo and started on uh, my love liberty quilt ah oh, nice oh foundation piece for flamingo that sounds cool i do like foundation piece and it's one of my favorite methods it really is it's uh you can get some really intricate pictures and things going with it there we go right so cut those three out and i've already done the same with my other fabric that i'm going to use okay so we're going to whip it up we're not going to whip anywhere we're going to gently slide over to the sewing machine <laughs> i'll slip my teeth first lisa says yeah lisa said could you use freezer paper uh you could um, but you do, the thing with freeze paper is obviously it comes off, that's just to do your template with. Um, 
I would I would suggest you need something just to stiffen it up a little bit. Um, I mean, it depends on what fabric you use, and if you're using a very soft, like just cotton, you would definitely need interfacing just to give it a bit more stability. If you were using like um, something like a linen or um, you know a heavier weight um, cotton, you could just transfer the template and you don't need to have them interfaced um but i do think the interfacing just helps it helps, helps keep the stuff in and stuff in as stuff in and stuff in as well <laughs> okay so we're gonna i'm gonna move this because i'm kind of trying to be careful on my back <laughs> okie doke right so you want to pair them up i don't know if you noticed sorry i forgot to say on oh, when i was drawing them out these um there's a little arrow on the template so this means this is the top okay so you do want to, they are slightly, they're not a perfect like petal shape, they are slightly different. So you want to make sure that the that you've got two different ones. So I've got a, a cream one and a red one, like that, and line them up so they're both those arrows are towards the top. Okay. And then I want to find the point here, okay, and find the point on the other side, which is there, okay because it doesn't matter how neat your drawing out is and you're cutting out, it's very often that it's not gonna be exactly right. So like that. And again, I would just find that line there and make sure it's hitting that line there. Okay, just pop some pins in so that there we go, like that. Okay, we're now gonna stitch down that line. Pull that pin in there hold that one in there right okay we're now going to stitch down that line there I would reduce your stitch length down a little bit to sort of about two because we're going to be stuffing these you want this seam to be really nice and nice and sort of tight and not be able to see any stuff in if you don't want to use a sewing machine you can absolutely stitch these by hand okay you could just hand stitch down that I would back stitch and I would back stitch quite small with a double thread because you really don't want to when you open it out see the um, see the fluff okay I'll see the stitching but as you know it's me I like everything on the machine so where possible I do right find that okay just while I'm stitching down here any any questions or comments there guys Nikki said yeah the uh, 9450 QC nice. um, and a new horn cabinet as it's too big for my uh. old one nice oh you've had a proper treat i'd love a horn cabinet i really would um. i'd like to be able to because because one of my children moved home josh <laughs> <laughs> i lost my sewing room because we had to turn it back into a bedroom which means i sew a lot in my dining room in the corner of my dining room and i just like to be able to put everything away you know be able to like clear it down and put it away because it just doesn't happen because I'm you know so busy and I'm sewing every day. I just think if I had a horn cabinet, I could just drop it away and it would look neat. In the moment, it just sits here all the time. It's so untidy. <laughs> uh, Emma said I have been sewing my red work panels. I even got my mum onto red work. Ah, nice. Oh, that's fab. Okay, so I've got stitched down that line there. Okay. See, getting people doing new crafts, and I'm just going to clip into those curves. So I'm just going to clip down like that. Don't cut your stitches, but just clip in to those curves. Okay, hopefully, you can see this. I'm doing it a slightly awkward angle. Okay, like that. So I've stitched from the top point there. Oh, well, that's the top point because the arrow. So the top point there, all the way down to the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to do that on the other two, so I've got to end up with three pairs. Okay, so I want a red one with a cream one, like that, and a red one and a cream one. I'm going to do exactly the same. Okay, so I'm going to find the find the lines, make sure they're lined up. So pop a pin through that side, and you can see it's not on the line there. So I would just move over until it hits the line, like that, and do that through the other bits as well yeah that one's not too bad and this on this side there we go there are um two spaces left i believe on the zoom class as well so um if anybody's interested please let me just check i'm doing the right side yeah there we go <laughs> um 
I would need to get the stuff out in the post tomorrow to you in, all, in time. So there are only, like I said, two spaces left. So please do grab them if you are, if you want to join us. Because by tomorrow I'm not going to be able to get the stuff out to you in the post um, to actually do the, you know, the kit bit. Okay, so let me get back up that one. Like that. I'm just going to do the other one quickly. So pin that in. Any comments there, lovely, while I'm... Uh, Jackie says hi, everyone. Hi, Jackie. Ireland. Ireland. Hi, Jackie. How are you, lovely? Uh, Suzanne said I backed and quilted my blocks ready to trim uh, to size. I have 18 and I can't decide whether to ditch two or do two more. Oh, I'll do two more, love. Do two more. Why would you not? <laughs> so there we go. So what would that be? Six by... If you've got 18, 16. That's a random, random configuration. What configuration are you doing? Let me know. It's 16. It's 8 by 2. Unless it was a bed runner, I suppose. If you're doing like a, a long bed runner. 8 by 2 would work, wouldn't it? There we go. So, done that one. I'll take those pins out. Right, I'm just going to very quickly clip those and then we can start putting these together. Once you've, you know, if you wanted to make these for like, you know, charity stores or friends or something, chain piece in it all is really, really quick actually. You can just do all of one bit and then all the next section. Okay, so I'm going to clip into those like that and clip it into this one. There we go. Like that. Right. You can, if you want to, give these a press. I found it didn't really matter. Okay. You can see that it's going to come out quite nice and round anyway. So, but you can give them a press if you want to, to make it go one way or press them open. Didn't really, I found it really didn't make a difference. So, now we're going to match these up. So, we've got to match the pairs up together to make sure that, so make sure all the arrows are still going the same way. And we're gonna match up this cream one to this red one here. Everybody with me so far, is it all still making sense? Hopefully it is. And again, do exactly the same. Find the the point and the line. Let's see, that needs okay, to go ask up. how many fat quarters do I need for all the carry bag? Uh, fat quarters, um, you, you don't need fat quarters, lovely. So you get, <coughs> um, you get a metre of fabric included in the price for your lining and you get your wadding and your zip because we're going to put a zipped pocket into it. Um, you need um, either a charm pack or 44, if you're going to cut them yourselves, 44 um, five inch squares. OK, so um, you might have a charm pack. Hang on, I can't get this one in the right place. There we go because I'm trying to talk and uh, pin at the same time. You might have a charm pack already there that you want to use up, or you might have fabric there that you want to use up, but you would need 44 um, five inch squares. If you're using a charm pack, we're gonna cut two out of the lining fabric, to, which is why you have a coordinating fabric, okay? Hopefully that, that's helpful, that's what you wanted to know. Anybody, anybody else there, Drew? Uh, Linda Head says you will have to rewatch. Keep losing connection. Oh, fooey. Yeah, you have to wait, wait and listen to me waffle again. So now I'm going to do exactly like I did before, and I'm going to stitch down that line. I've made sure they all line up. You want to make sure all of the rest of it is tucked out of the way, so you're just stitching through those. You know, it's very easy to <laughs> accidentally flip out like that. So just make sure all this is pulled out and just sew down that line there. Okay. I'm just adding all the segments now together okay so i'm gonna go down that one and give it a little back stitch at the beginning and round that line is it nobody else is having connection issues it's not us is it don't please you're so. not getting any blips as you're filming drew now oh. there we go so that's that one and then Open it up to find out where, where the gap is. There, there it is there. Okay. And then we're going to add this last one in, in here. Okay. So just think, oh, <laughs> just think about doing, 
because at the moment you've got like a it'd be quite nice christmas tree ornaments wouldn't they that sort of shape obviously turned the right way round, but it's not a ball at the moment so we're gonna add this last lot of sections in so make sure that they go in which way round am i there we go that way round. <laughs> red to cream red to cream like that and this is quite fiddly trying to do it at this angle it would be much easier if i was facing me and again i'm going to line that one up and pin it in place yeah there we go like that line this one up here and i'm going to do this last line as a full line and then once we've done that i'll show you how to do the next bit there we go like that and get that bit in there so again get all the rest of it out of the way so you've just got the two pieces and you're going to stitch down that line and just get that in right nice and close where is it there okay i'm just back stitch a weenie bit just to secure that top any questions there guys uh, there's no questions no everyone says that there's no internet problems you're all having internet problems, no, 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 no one is. Oh, no one is. Sorry, sorry Lindy Lou, I think it's just you, darling. There we go. So. Right, that's most of it done. But this very last one here, you can see this isn't open, okay? We're just going to stitch down. We're going to stitch down about that much that side. And we're going to leave a gap. And then we're going to stitch down about that much that side. That's for obviously turning through and stuffing, okay? So again, get them all out of the way, line them up, and do this last little bit of sewing here, down here. But remember to leave the gap, because I didn't on, the, on when I was doing the pair, I was just merrily sewing away, and then I was like, oh, damn it, that's one picking. So, very easily done. Go. So I'm going to sew down about that much back stitch so it doesn't come unpicked, and then leave myself a gap like that, and then this side. Oh, come on! <laughs> and no, oh, no. There we go. Didn't want to back stitch then. So I've left myself a gap like this. Okay, can you see? So I've left a gap here in that seam. You now want to push all this through, so I'm going to scoot back over this side. Oh, like that, which is not good for me. <laughs> and push all this through that gap. Okay, so we're going to. It's a bit. I should probably have left a slightly bigger gap, but it's less to sew up if you squish, pull, pull it all through like that. Okay. Like that. Get your fingers in there, and. There you go. You can see you've got kind of got your your shell shell of your apple there. Okay, so as you start to stuff it, in fact, I'll grab the stuff in now. Uh, as you start to stuff it, this will come out as a, a full sort of appley shape. Okay, doesn't look like it's going to come out very ball shaped at the moment, but it will do. So sorry, two seconds. Um, I was just going to show you on this one, but I'll I'll I will actually stuff this one for you. Grab the stuff in. stuff in here hopefully this is enough left to do this one if not I'll still a bit out of the pair okay it takes more stuff in than you think it's going to I was like oh yeah yeah I've got loads there actually to get them nice and um sturdy it takes more than a more than you think okay well, I'm just gonna shove the stuffing in and then we're gonna just ladder stitch it closed okay so get in there just go in there. Right, so while I'm stuffing this, guys, talk to me. What are you up to? What's everyone doing today? I, uh... Uh, Jenny says, you know you watch Sarah too much, um, in brackets, live and repeats while sewing, when your husband comes in and asks why is Sarah not using a Frexon pen? <laughs> <laughs> she always uses a Frexon pen. <laughs> um, brackets, I roll. <laughs> Yeah, not this time, Bruce. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I do always, almost always use a Frixon pen. So, but yeah, no, with this, I wanted it, you want to, because you're going to iron it on afterwards. 
Um, there we go. Oh, look at that. Just enough. Okay. So. I could probably get a bit more in there, in fact, actually. Because I've stuffed that, really stuffed that one so it's nice and sturdy. And that one's a little bit, a little bit squishy still. I think I'd probably... It's just a bit more ripe. Yeah, <laughs> a bit... Slightly riper apple, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal a bit out of the pear. And get that really stuffed in. Because I want to show you just how I did the, the leaves and stuff. So, okay, that's a bit better. A little bit more in there. Okay. I'm going to grab a needle and thread, ladies and gents, so that I can show you the ladder stitch and then um, just how I did the did the little leaves and stuff. Okay. There we go. Right. So, two seconds. Let me just grab my needle and thread. I've, I've left everything on the other side of the room today. I'm really not with it. There we go. That one and that one. And I'll use a of scissors. Oh, need the really long needle, otherwise that's not going to work. Nice long needle as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ladder stitch that little bit closed. So I'm going to get a length of thread and just I'm using a much thicker needle, so hopefully you guys will be able to see it um, than I would normally use for this. Um, but if I use a real skinny thin needle, I'm not sure you ladies and gents are going to see it. So Get rid of that big thread there already. Move that out of the way. So ladder stitch. Um, so you could just slip stitch it, but the problem with slip stitching is you see it. So I thought I'd show you ladder stitch. So I do like to just use a single thread. And you can pop a knot in the end. You can do double if you want, but I don't think it really needs it. Okay, and I'm going to where's the gap? I'm going to bring it up just a little bit back to bury that knot inside. Okay, so I think Sad showed you ladder stitch on the dash hound actually, but I'll just go through it again. So I want to bring the thread out right at the opening here, okay, where I want to start. And then I'm going to put my needle in flat along the seam and take a little snippet like that. Hopefully this is focusing. That side. And come parallel across to this seam and take a little snippet. So it's really difficult to do it at an angle because I can't see the seam like that. Okay, and then parallel across. Take another snippet. Oh, these are way too big, these snippets. But because, hang on, let me, see, let me come over. Let me see if I can come over it a little bit. There we go. About that size I want. <laughs> and parallel across like that. And then when you pull it up, you get like an invisible join. Now, I've taken too big a, a snippet because I was trying to do it away from myself. Let me go like that. And that size. And that side. Oh, there we go. It's very, really hard to see because it holds it at an angle. And that side. There we go. Yeah. And then I can, when you pull this tight, pull this up, you can see it all kind of disappears. So I'll just do this very last bit and then we'll pop the pop the stalk and stuff on. Okay, like that. Who else is there? Anybody chattering today? Anyone else got any comments? And then you can just bury that back down. So I tend to just do a little tiny stitch in there like that and then bury it oop, along the seam like that. Okay, now that's not very neat, I have to say, because I'm doing it in a strange angle. But you can see where oh, I don't know, I don't know if I will be able to find it. It was there on this one. You can see it's all completely buried in because I, I had it faced towards me so I could actually see what I was doing. So that is lad stitch. Now you can now just give it a good mold and a roll, and that fluff will kind of um, what's the word? sort of sit into shape like I said you don't have to do fluff in them you could put um, a weight you could put some sand you could put make little sandbags in there you can get those um, like little um, pellets as well that will go in there which would make really good pattern weights or just make lots and you let the dog play with them all the you know babies grandkids and stuff right so 
first thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of green felt and I want to cut myself out. Now there is on the template, there is leaf shapes, but I freehanded them, freehanded them for easiness. And I just used my pinking shears with some felt. Now, if you weren't using felt and you're just going to use fabric, you can just pink and shear that as well, or you could sew them together um, and turn right sides out. So I'm just cutting out with some felt. Ooh, that's my needle. Some leaf shapes. Leaf shapes? Never sounds quite right, leaf shape. Here we go. Okay, so I've got a couple of little little leaves like that. I also want um, a little circle as well to go on the bottom. So I want a little round circle. So just freehand a little circle. Again, you can absolutely use the template and do that. So that was going to go on the bottom. And then I want a two centimeter square of fabric. So again, I'm just going to that's a bit big we weenie bit big let's go down a weenie bit like that two centimeters five six. yes about right um like that okay so that's going to make your stalk so with your stalk move this all out the way with your stalk what you're going to do is just roll it up <coughs> bless you <laughs> roll it up drew's having a sneeze like that okay and just pop a little a few little stitches down here so roll this up Ooh, right come on Ooh. a little fruit fly on me there haha <laughs> with the apples <laughs> really was a little fruit fly as well here we go so roll this up like that it's your second fruit joke of the day my second fruit joke what was my first fruit joke you said pair them together <laughs> <laughs> oh, hun. Ba boom. I didn't. E I see. I didn't even get that one. <laughs> oh, there we go. Dodgy fruit jokes all day, is it? <laughs> oh, Drew. I couldn't do these one o'clocks without you. have Been an absolute peach. <laughs> That's proper dad jokes, isn't it? <laughs> Here goes. So I'm just a little, little bit. Little, little bit either side in a matching thread and just stitching that up Ooh, just slip stitching it all the way along okay go on there ladies i want your dodgy fruit jokes now okay like that all right and we're going to stitch that on just by taking a just chop that off there right the way there we go i'm going to stitch it on just by taking a couple of little stitches like that and through and then through the base of him like that okay can you see so i've gone through the pin cushion and through the base and it'll do that okay and then down through like that and through again okay and then you want a fairly longish needle because you want to go down through the pin cushion and come out right through the bottom hole which it takes a weeny bit of there we go there is that okay and give it a bit of a tug just to give it a bit of shape okay and then on the bottom you're going to stitch on this bit here so again I'm just going to go like that through the bottom and back up to the top Ooh, and get it as close to the stalk as you can be careful don't stab yourself right there we go like that and i would go back through the stalk just one more time oh don't catch the pin cushion and back through to the bottom is that making sense girls what i'm doing girls and girls yeah just pulling it through because i'm pulling that that tight it kind of squishes it up and gives it that sort of puffy shape and then you can just tie it off on the bottom, like that. Linda says we're repairing nutters. <laughs> Ooh, pears and nuts with that one, missus. <laughs> okay, like that. So I would just then bury that end. And your leaves, literally exactly the same. So I would just, a couple of little stitches here, 
and here just to hold those in place and there's your apple all done your pear is just a slightly different template shape exactly the same method but you've got slightly different shapes okay to this to the apple but it's exactly the same okay and you end up i'm gonna have to restuff him and sew him but you end up with a <laughs> an escaping pair a pear shape okay so that's your fruity pin cushions okay like i said it doesn't have to be pin cushions they could be pattern weights they could be little ornaments i think i might turn this one into a, a pin cushion for the front of my machine i'm just going to stitch some elastic on there so it sits nice and close on the machine um yeah that's it girls um <laughs> i haven't really got anything else to show you today i don't think well done to kathleen for the free prize draw and well done to sonia for the raffle um i'm going to be back tomorrow with some crochet and i'm going to show you some easy crochet dish dish cloths something that you can you know use instead of j cloths and you can chuck them in the dishwasher and that you know blast them clean that way or pop them in the wash uh, washing machine and you can boil wash them we're going to use some 100 percent cotton for those um and i'm going to show you a couple of easy little patterns um so with that on that tomorrow wednesday we've got block a week and then i'm on thursday because i'm off the weekend so um i'm on thursday we're going to do some animal panel cushions so uh, that's it that's it everybody uh, any more dodgy fruit jokes there before we go uh, no? No. <laughs> Nikki asked, "Could you buy? Uh, could you bury a magnet in the base?" Oh yes, you could. I don't see why not. Yeah, absolutely. You could put a magnet on the base. The only thing I would say about that is, don't put magnets by your computerized machine because they can wipe the software. Um, but you could, you know, could put it somewhere else. Absolutely. But yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't put a little magnet here. Stick it on the notice board and stuff there. Yeah. Uh, Any other that? questions? No. No? Brilliant. Okie doke. Um, I will see you all tomorrow then, guys and girls. And uh, have a nice afternoon. The sun is coming out here, so I'm going to go and get some washing on the line. I'm going to ask Drew to go to Banath and do a delivery. It, it does look like a great day. Oh, <laughs> Drew, that is bad. I might have to sack him for that one. <laughs> Great day, really, really. <laughs> I'm taken back by peach compliment. <laughs> right, <laughs> bye, ladies, and see you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye.